afternoon, everyone, and welcome to this Zoom workshop aimed at introducing the informatic training scheme for this academic year. Just a little note, I just mentioned it before, but for people that join now, if you can please keep your videos turned off and the audio muted so that we don't get distracted during the presentation. And then without any delays, we can get started. Becky, if you can change the next slide, please. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. So this is the structure of today's workshop. We'll uh, start by introducing Translation Manchester and the scheme, and then give you a brief overview of the courses and the units on offer. We try to keep these as brief as possible so that we can allow more time for the open session of question and answer at the end. We already got some questions sent to our in inbox, but please, can I encourage you to use the chat function in uh, Zoom during the meeting. We will answer the question at the end, so you might not get an answer during the presentation, but we will definitely pick that up at the end of the, uh, of the presentation. And uh, also, we got an hour for this, but if there is um, uh, some unanswered question, we're happy to, to answer them specifically via email um, after the event. And all the slides together with the recording of the meeting will be make avail made available on our website as soon as possible. So let's start with the next slide of introductions. So I'll start from myself since I'm talking. So my name is Alessandro and I'm Translation and Research Facilitator at Translation Manchester. However, until not a long time ago, I was a postdoc as most of you guys on the, on the, on the, on the meeting today. And uh, Becky is also Translational Facilitator at Manchester and together we run all the activity which are aimed to facilitating translational research. And then we have today on the call also Mudassar. Mudassar is a lecturer in health data sciences and, and also academic lead for the informatic, informatics training scheme. So he will uh, take us through the overall overview of the, of the scheme. The next slide, please. Thank you. So a bit of background about translational research. I'm sure most of you will be familiar with it, but basically we define translational research as the process by which specific uh, basic scientific discoveries are translated into patient-focused research with the ultimate goal to benefit healthcare system and society. At Translation Manchester, we are here to facilitate this process and to remove the hurdles and bottlenecks that stop the progression of the translational project. We are actually funded by the Wellcome Trust via the Wellcome Trust Translational Partnership Award. So this um, award has been going on for about three years now and uh, we're running this scheme for the second year in a row. But amongst other activities, we uh, provide uh, funding from prime for prime priming projects, translational projects, and, uh, and um, we aim to support translational research activities across all the three faculties. I will now leave the floor to Becky for the rest of the presentation. Thanks, Alessandra. So just a brief uh, background on the informatics training scheme. So we've identified access to informatics expertise as a bottleneck for translational researchers at the University of Manchester. And that's why we've set up this scheme, which is now running for the second time. So it ran this time last year as well. And the aim here is that we can upskill our researchers by giving them access to informatics training and skills, which they can apply then to their research projects. So successful applicants will be offered a place on the scheme and Translation Manchester will essentially cover the fees that are associated with them taking part in those teaching units. We have funding to, for up to 60 unit places and a single applicant can apply for a maximum of two units. So we have somewhere between 30 and 60 places available for individual participants this year. So if you haven't already visited our website on the training page, you'll find all the information that you need regarding uh, applying to the scheme and what units are on offer in our training brochure. So I'd encourage you to go there as a first part of call and have a look at the information available. You'll also find the application form there so you can download that, complete it and return it to us before the deadline of 10 a.m. on Wednesday the 2nd of September which is next week. At the end of the training if you take part in the scheme you'll also be asked to complete an end of training report. And just to highlight uh, one of the questions in the application form, which is really asking about how these, how the training you're going to get and how the new skills that you, you endeavour you will get from the training will be implemented in your translational research and how it will help your research progress. And we refer to the translational pathway. And I've just put a, a figure of that in here. And again, you can find all this on our website. But really, we want you to think about where you are on the pathway 
and how you want to how you want to progress to the next stage or the stages beyond and how the new skills that you're going to get from the course are going to help you do that so i'll pass over now to uh, Madassa, who'll give us uh, an overview of the courses and units okay. thank you becky hello everyone um <clears throat> excuse me so indeed thanks to translation manchester and especially to becky and alessandro for creating this booklet and all those resources and arranging everything. I'm just gonna run over the courses very quickly, um, uh, different courses and units, and then we'll come to the mainly for the question and answer session. Um, so I think um, we have added since, compared to last year, we have added quite a few new courses. So it should um, be of interest to much wider, wider audience. Uh, but I think a couple of things to start with. Um, these courses are basically um, not designed for, for this very purpose and these were the, these are part of the courses from um, existing master's course pg cert also research method etc so some you'll see some of them might feel look too irrelevant too difficult even too easy and parts of these courses so there should be some thought into um, making the right choices uh, secondly um, I think we have quite a few courses in um, quite a few units in different courses which have same names and but the content could be at different level the depth of the content is different level also there might be some differences within within those units across different courses okay so um, first um, course is MSc bioinformatics and systems biology I think this is our one of the um, I'm not sure how many years, but it's one of the longest running master's course in Manchester. And we have selected four uh, units from this course and um, all 15 credit units. First is bioinformatics, which is basically um, uh, some basic concepts and practical tools and resources and techniques for uh, different omics data analysis. And uh, programming skills is basically introduces you, without assuming any background, introduces you to Python as well as Java programming. And from the from a beginner's level up to um, writing pipelines using browser-based um, um, browser-based interfaces like uh, CoCalc, Eclipse, and IDE for Java, for example. So, um, and these are kind of geared towards all these pipelines towards biological applications. And computational approaches to biology is more into systems biology uh, aspect of the course, which is which covers uh, modeling techniques like uh, differential equation-based modeling, constraint-based modeling, and uh, also um, other network modeling techniques. So this is a mixture of different modeling techniques applied to biological data. And the fourth course is experimental design and statistics, which basically covers uh, basic stats, applied statistics and probability concepts quite, goes quite into detail with the hypothesis testing. And um, all those implementations are within, within R programming language. And, and a good chunk of this course is on experimental design, which would be of interest to quite a few of if you guys do. And next one, please. Yes, Andrew. Okay, yeah, there we go. <laughs> So the second one is PG Cert in Clinical Bioinformatics. So you see that we have again selected, um, this is our distance learning online course. And we have selected again four courses, which have some overlap with the MSc Bioinformatics and Systems Biology. And first of them is Introduction to Clinical Bioinformatics. So essentially bioinformatics, core bioinformatics techniques and uh, concepts, but with their focus on clinical applications and um, human genetics and genomics focus basically. Uh, health informatics is um, covers topics working with health data, uh, specifically electronic health records and uh, related to those kind of human and organizational factors. Um, um, you can imagine the biggest organization where, which is holding electronic health records in here in, in this country. Um, introduction to programming again this is overlapping with the previous programming course but is um, not just this is online but also it's based on only Python again not assuming any background uh, for you uh, but this is uh, basically online and based on 
chunks of codes with specific applications within Jupyter notebooks. So, um, but easy to follow step by step from uh, from beginners, and all based working on GitHub and and Jupyter notebooks. Uh, next in sequencing within this is. Um, um, again, biometrics tools for next generation sequencing data. We again we focus on patient diagnosis and treatment, gene panel, gene panels, and variant calling in clinical diagnostics. So, um, it, relatively general. We have another introduction to next gen course, but I'll, I'll come to that in a bit. Um, this um, health education England accredited course in MSc genomic medicine. Okay, have uh, again quite bit of content common in common with um, bioinformatics and, and systems biology MSc as well, as well as PG cert but again the focus is as the name suggests is specialized for genomics of patients so again so we selected four courses bioinformatics the first one bioinformatics interpretation and statistics and data quality insurance so the name name is like a mixed bag which covers core bioinformatics techniques and um, also, uh, the quality control on sequencing data um, also, and relevant statistics uh, as well. So it's quite a quite a mixed mixed course. Should be compared against the uh, bioinformatics in MSc in systems biology and biomedical. So next in sequencing in, in omics in medicine disease. Again, this overlaps with PG third course, but this has focus on um, um, NGS applications in genotyping specifically, for example different types of genetic variations, copy number variations specifically, and also the bioinformatics tools, uh, not just the systems, but bioinformatics tools dealing with these, uh, all of these applications. Um, I wouldn't go into detail of health informatics, it's quite similar to uh, the previous one with, uh, again, focus on governance and data quality and security and confidentiality issues when dealing with health records and other health data in primary and secondary care. And similarly, economics is Next slide, please. Um, this we have included this. Uh, this is another one which we included this year, and um, which is basically training um, a generation, next generation of health data scientists. And in this first unit on fundamental maths and stats, basically covers uh, relevant background in maths and stats, but also uh, goes into um, uh, basic introductory regression modeling and uh, cleaning and realization of the data. Uh, also, some aspects of data mining and machine learning are covered within this course. But important thing is that this, this course is basically a prereq for biological modeling, which is the, number, this, the third in, in the slide, for health data, which covers into advanced um, <clears throat> modeling techniques with health data like survival modeling. Um, I kind of part of this as dealing with missing data in health records on health data, also machine learning for the health data. And um, health systems, information system is basically related to more software and systems for health um, information systems within uh, organizations. Um, next one, please. So we, this year we have um, included a course on public health and um, given um, there's much interest in, in population health and epidemiology in the current circumstances in this year. So there are a few relevant courses I wouldn't go into individual details, but are, are in, available to you uh, to join in. Next one, please. Now, uh, so far, what we've discussed is all the postgraduate courses. And this year only, we have these three uh, units within this research methods umbrella. So these are kind of not more suited to a specific um, um, kind of training in those individual units, like st basic statistics, for example, a gentle introduction to Python programming and machine learning. So these are five credits self-led and more flexible, so this will, this will add, some people might find it more useful in the, um, to manage their own work, as well as training, give them an introduction to the field. Um, next one. And also, be, beside these ones, we have this online MOOCs. Uh, got a few of our colleagues have done a really good job and create these materials online, which is free for everyone to use. So you can actually register for these two MOOCs, which is on clinical bioinformatics and AI for healthcare. 
so you do you don't have to go through the program but will be i think we'll request you to let us know if you have gone through and uh, provide feedback at the end and next one so i will end uh, this uh, with this kind of putting all of those overlapping courses together in one slide so i think this is where you kind of need to focus think about what you can do availability on, I mean, on your time content of the course the depth on the content and also um, if it is self-led is online or if you have to follow the class and for example um, you have programming skills in msc bioinformatics systems biology but you have programming skills in three other like research methods but also in um, pg cert so certainly programming skills in ms within msc the content is um, wider you follow the class uh, you build up with them through through the course and it's being based on, I think, 12 lectures and with um, uh, a couple of dozens of practical sessions. Um, similarly, you have, for example, fundamental math and stats for health data compared to introduction to statistics, as well as uh, the course, I think I missed it, on uh, statistics and experimental design. So there you will have um, statistics and experimental design would cover not just the basic stats and uh, probability, but also implementations of the hypothesis test uh, in R. And there are positives and negatives. So you can use the search methods you can do yourself and you like, and also the level of the content you, you, you'd like to, to join in. I think this, this is where you need to kind of weigh in your options of overlapping courses as well to, to choose the right one. Uh, I think this is it. We can now go to questions and um, Becky. Yeah, so if you have any questions, please do submit them via the chat function. I can see a couple coming in. We have had a few through in the inbox, so we'll tackle these first. Uh, are we going to start with this ones? Yeah, let's start with these, Madassa, please. Yeah, so uh, this first question, I think everybody can see. Um, so this is, this is quite a specific uh, specific to problem to their own research, the person who have submitted. So I would suggest MSc, uh, MSc uh, Genomic Medicine. They have next-gen sequencing course, probably the most relevant to this one. But I would emphasize that this is, again, not a kind of informatics or statistics clinic. Um, I mean, that would be needed. That would be helpful. But in this case, you are, we are, the purpose is to build the capacity and train so you can find solutions to your problems yourself. So in this case, I think the most relevant would be uh, um, next gen sequencing or bioinformatics within MSc and from uh, genomic medicine. But again, would that would might not solve the exact problem, which is uh, the specific problem which is mentioned here. But that's the most closest, I think, I would suggest. And second question I'm a second year PhD student, but currently in Singapore. So I'm very interested in a couple of courses. So these two courses, part of MSc bioinformatics, uh, genomic medicine. Do you know yet roughly what time sessions will be scheduled? Um, I'm not sure. Um, so you'll have to check the timetable for this one. So by, by session, I, I'm assuming they mean the time. Uh, I mean, this is they are overseas. Yeah, I think that we, to address this one, we'll have to go and have a chat with the course unit organizers for this particular one. Yeah. So, so we'll, I we'll think contact them. Are semester one courses, but the exact timetable we are not sure yet. And when, when the sessions will be um, in terms of, so we'll have to go back and we can follow this up on the email afterwards. Um, third one, I think I, I touched on this one. So if I, this is quite a good example. So statistics and experimental design in MSc and also self, compared to self-based course on introduction to statistics. Um, and they said that if the, this course, 5165161 is a higher level course, indeed this is an MSc course, uh, would it be possible to complete the unit in a more flexible pace? So again, the flexibility is in the research methods, but the content uh, depth is more in the, in, in the MSc course. So that's uh, entirely your choice. You have more flexibility in, in, in research methods, but more content and structure follow, following the class in, in the MSc course. That I would agree with what they've said. <laughs> Can I apply for more than one unit within single course? Yes, I assume um, 
Alessandro, yes? Yes, I think that's right. Yeah. Um, for individual units in a course, it is required to take preceding basic units. Do I need to take bioinformatics unit in order to qualify for the computational approach to biology? Okay, so this is, uh, I mean, this example is not true. I think in our case, you definitely can go to computational approaches to biology without bioinformatics course. But there are some examples where uh, prereq would be, if not required, then we highly recommend it. I mean, this cohort, you guys are different. You all of the, you are PhD students, postdocs are got significant experience in your, in your, you have in your field. Um, so this will not be same as doing um, prereq building on one course to another. But I would suggest, for example, the example I've given in MSc Health Data Science, uh, the fundamental maths and stat would definitely be required if you, at least the le level of knowledge you have in that course would be required for the, for the biological modeling. Um, it's not a strict requirement from us, from uh, Translation Manchester, I guess, uh, Alessandro. It's not a requirement, but I think there are a couple there are a few examples where you, it's highly recommended that you have that background before you go take up that course. One I've quoted, which is a health data science one. Not in this case, definitely, but the bioinformatics was mentioned. It should be fine. Yeah. Okay, Becky, could you, could you take control? And if there's a question relevant to me, I can answer. Otherwise, if it's admin, you can, uh, on the chat. Yeah, so I've had a few questions through on the chat. So I've got a question from mm -hmm. Laura, Laura Ann. So she says, um, my work's focused on proteomics and metabolomics of synovial fluid correlated with biomedical gait analysis. An analysis that she will do will include principal co component analysis, uh, some biomedical modeling and correlation of the two. So she's looking at selecting uh, computational approaches to biology as her first unit, but has her second unit. She wonders if bioinformatics from the Bioinformatics from the bioinformatics uh, course would be preferable over bioinformatics interpretation, statistics, and data quality. So, which of those two would be yeah. a better fit? So, I'm not sure what kind of bio biomechanic. Uh, so, what kind of more? So, okay, biomechanical modeling. So, I said by biological modeling. So, so certainly, uh, this computational uh, approaches to biology would be useful course for you, sure, and. I would say with more background on um, a realization of the data, like you have mentioned, Laura, uh, out of those two, I would suggest bioinformatics interpretation statistics. Although these courses have quite a big focus on genomic medicine. So all of their examples, the sources would be genomic medicine specific. Why not consider, um, um, why not consider, um, experimental design and statistics, that course have quite a bit of, uh, I think, basic stats. And um, again, I think it's a quite difficult choice. So you, you, again, you said proteomics and metabolomics. I'm not sure if there's any course specifically dealing with these two, except the bioinformatics. So if you take computational approaches to biology combined with bioinformatics course from MSD Systems Biology, that might be probably, I will, change my stance. That might be the best combination, I think, in my opinion. Yeah. Although there will be some aspects missing from I mean, metabolomics, I'm not sure. Proteomics, they'll be very um, light touch um, within bioinformatics. But again, these two, I would, I would give, given options, I would go for them. Yeah, Laura, does that answer your question? You, you can, you can, you can yeah. reply if you like. Um, hi, how are you? Uh, thanks very much. No, so I'm a bit torn actually. So I read through all of the perspectives in detail, and as you said, all of the um, units within the MSc for bioinformatics would be applicable. Now, I don't know. I've done a lot of or statistics before, and I don't know if, how how advanced or how basic the experimental design and statistics would be. Um, but I've never used any um, hierarchical cluster analysis or principal component analysis before for this kind of research. So definitely the computational approaches to biology is going to be very useful for me. Um, but I, I'm just wondering what would best complement that and I'm struggling to pick out which one. Um, so so maybe I just need to reread it. Because what we're doing is looking at biomechanical modeling um, using motion capture analysis. So w one is looking at the gait variables when a patient walks as captured by cameras. 
and trying to correlate that information with the uh, biological milieu of the joint. So taking the proteomics and the metabolomics and trying to reconcile the biological with the biomechanical. And this, I don't know how to do. <laughs> Yeah, so I, I don't think this will this will be entirely covered. Um, your, no, first, well. your first choice is very clear. So the yeah. approaches to biology is, it stands out, and for the second one, um, I think metabolomics and proteomics, maybe bioinformatics course would be fine, but that would not again cover much on on pre-processing data and visualization and dimensionality reduction and PCA and clustering, etc. Right. Right. So your choice is two, you could have done with three. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know this is it. I, I, <laughs> I could do with loads, but well, I can I, find... Yeah, I, I think you, could, you should consider um, if in the MOOC, could you go into the content, might help, might help you. You could take third as MOOC. Right. Least you can make an optimal choice there. And may I ask, um, as this is only the second year of running, and I'm only uh, this is my second year of my PhD, mm -hmm. if you uh, subscribe to units and are a successful appl applicant this year, does that exclude you from being eligible to apply again in your final year? We don't have any such rule as yet. Okay. <laughs> so, no, I'm, I'm, I, I think my understanding is you can certainly apply next year again. Okay. Yeah, yeah I would think so. Yeah, okay. I would agree. Okay. That's fantastic. That's really useful. So next one. Okay. So we'll move on to the next question then. That's Lewis is interested in uh, bioinformatics for proteomics. And he's asking if you would recommend one of the units over any of the others. His research is looking at complex wound proteomics specifically. Therefore, he would have thought that MSc in genomic medicine might be less appropriate than the more general bioinformatics MSc unit. Which yeah. might cover proteomics. What, what do you think, Madassa? Yeah, I, I agree with the with you, but again, I would I would I would say that the proteomics is um, not covered in depth. There should have been there could have been another proteomics course itself from the computational angle, right? Mm -hmm. So um, so there is some in, some introduction some work on aspects of programming. Proteomics are covered, but that is probably your best choice. Yeah. Okay. Yes, does that mm -hmm. answer your question? I don't know if you're still on the call. Yeah, that's great. Thanks, Ali. Yeah. Okay. Good, good. So then to the next one. So it's stated that to take the way a medical modeling for health data, then fundamentals, mathematics, and statistics for health data science should be a prerequisite. Who have linked to me? With a basic level of stats, including parametric and non-parametric tests, regression, but not an understanding of all the elements mentioned, data mining. PCA and clustering be okay to apply without taking the fundamentals of yeah. these courses using R, Stata, or either. I so, think we covered this a little bit earlier, but if you want to expand a little bit. Yeah, no, no, I'll, 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 okay. I'll, I'll do again. Just a second, let me just go through again um, the topics covered. So I think the main things, which because I know these courses, I'm, I'm, I'm teaching part of, part of the biological modeling. So the things you most need for biological modeling would be um, the basics, Stats, et cetera, you mentioned is fine. What you need would be um, programming in R, at least very introduction, introduction, and also some um, on learning, for example, um, linear models, um, classification and regression. If the introduction, if you can catch up on those before, uh, on before you could, could probably do, given, given your background uh, on, on other, other, other bits. Um, so I think the main, this is the main thing we're building on. So survival modeling and um, other, for example, missing data that needs um, understanding of regression and, um, for example, linear models, classification as well. So I would say um, um, you, you could catch up, but the, you mentioned a few things which are so non parametric test regression, but not an understanding of all that much. Yeah, I think it should be fine. So regression, it, it, it should cover the minimal, minimum. Okay. Um, Shall we move on to the next question? So I don't, I'm not sure about the name, but they've, looked, they've got a large, a large data set of patient characteristics and never done any bioinformatics or complicated statistical analysis. 
and I've lost it. Okay. Um, for example, containing non-numeric data, drug levels, resistance markers, or quality of life scores. Which course would be most appropriate if I wanted to learn how to analyze and ask appropriate questions for these data, as well as apply the correct statistics? Okay. So patient, uh, who is this? So MQBSS. Yeah. So could could you um, is that speak to us? So what is patient characteristics? What kind of patient characteristics? It is, this is the health data, right? I don't know if the person is still on the call can expand on that. Much of some. Oh, my name is Hi, Lily. Hi, Lily. Okay, I got this you. Is, Hi, Lily. Hello. Yeah, so it's, it's um, uh, some of the data is numeric, uh, but a lot of it is um, non numeric. So, like I said, um, you know, quality of life scores, um, symptoms. Um, and what I, I, I want to be able to ask the right questions. And then once I've asked the right questions, I want to be able to analyze the data using the correct statistics. Um, and I've never, ever done anything like this before. I've always had very, my data has always been very quantitative and very numerical. So I know the routine statistics, but I don't know um, probably a lot more. And I certainly have never used R. Okay. So... I think I mean, this looks like an, a case of health data science, most relevant to health data science courses. Uh, so you, this is the health, essentially health patient level data. And you certainly those models can handle numeric and non-numeric data. And depending upon the question, again, if you want to, if you are predicting something using those patient features, uh, you want to just visualize that data, summarize that data in some smart way. So you, I mean, you need a generic skill of programming. So I would say go for one of the programming because this is an asset, not just for this specific data, but in general, maybe. So if you can, a programming course, but also maybe fundamental maths and stats, which includes quite a, bit, a little bit of working with the such data. Okay, I mean, you, could have gone to biological, you could have gone to biological modeling. I mean, you cannot take those two courses at the same time, right? Because there's a one, one after another. Mm -hmm. So if you choose second one, probably that might not be very suitable in case, I, mean, I don't know what you think. So one of those, two, I mean, you could have taken, ideal would be biological modeling. If you have a little bit of background that you can catch up, that would be the kind of things we okay. most relevant to this data. But a programming course would be useful if you have time and, and capacity. So, I mean, you would need programming in those courses, th that course as well, if you take biological modeling or uh, fundamental, the, the one prereq for that. So you'd need some experience with R, for example, or any other um, such language. Okay, great. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Um, Polly is... Yes, the next question is from Polly. She's asking if it's possible to get a more detailed overview of the material covered in each course. Um, so I could probably answer a part of that question. There is a link on the brochure that takes you to the uh, unit description. However, I don't, I'm not sure on how much more detail, uh, which type of detail you're after. I don't know if you've tried to have a look at those pages, those web pages. Uh, otherwise, Mudasar, have you got any idea on how to get more information about that? Um, Polly, um, which course are you actually talking about? I know, I mean, we, we went, went through quite quickly. It wasn't possible yeah. to cover everything really. So you have to really run through very quickly and just uh, assuming that people yeah. have gone through themselves and we answer those questions in this workshop. So I'm um, not sure which course you are keen to, if you, I mean, there are there is some some more detail than we have included in the brochure. If you go to page, because yeah. uh, they are linked to the each module page within the brochure. So there is a hyperlink, uh, you could go there. <laughs> but um, okay, if thanks. There is, I suppose my question was more to do with, um, like in some cases, it's not very clear, like how practical the application, the things would be like how much it's an overview of different techniques one could apply versus how much it's practically applying those techniques to data. Does that make sense? Um, I mean, if an like, example course would help me kind of set, set in this one. Which, which uh, one? Yeah, hang on a second. I'll just get the brochure up. <laughs> I've got it here somewhere. Uh, so, for example, on the 
a PG search clinical bioinformatics. Um, it talks about how uh, next generation sequencing technologies can be applied, um, but it's not a, it wasn't clear to me to what extent the participants in the course would just be sort of learning about the different uh, pipelines and things that can be used or how much of it would be sort of practically um, using those tools and which sort of tools it was that they were looking at. Yeah. Um, so for example, I do have some experience of R and that sort of thing, but I wasn't sure whether it would be like using pipelines which I'm already familiar with or whether it'd be different ones. That's why I was sort of interested in uh, quite specifically what it was that the um, course involved looking at. So I think um, this um, clinical bioinformatics overall, overall course, I don't know what you are currently doing, but the, what you have done with R before is I think pretty much already, there, there won't be much R in, in this course anyway, right? This will be working with those specific two lines to the more like a gen, human 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 genetics i think um genomic variations in this specific course uh Holly, i mm -hmm. think that would be i mean how how exactly it will be very difficult without <laughs> going through this course uh, if i if, if, probably speaking to Ange davis might help uh, for this specific course if you could send her an email and there might be a, you could accept can we access um, a module page. Uh, I, I don't think, um, unless you're registered for, you can access on um, the contents of the previous year or anything like that, Alessandro. Yeah. Detailed contents. I don't think so. Yeah, so I'm not able to answer in uh, completely your question, Polly, but I think this is um, more to do, this specific course is more to do with um, um, human the gen genetics and re genomic variations. Um, Kind of geared towards that cl clinical bioinformatics application. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, I think suppose the only thing that went out as an example is just that I suppose in a way I was hoping it would be possible to kind of have a more detailed overview on a lecture by lecture basis of what it was that the each course covered to okay. know whether that was likely to be. Content. We don't, we don't have that detailed content. I don't have access to that, but I think you might be able to discuss with uh, send email should be fine if you're coming through this course. I send them that we, I want to know more before deciding it. So the course. Uh, you might be able to get See? access to course contents. So if you have a list of units that you're interested in and uh, contact us in the uh, translation inbox, we can put you in touch with the program directors and unit coordinators. Okay, super. Thank you very much. Yeah. Okay, so the next question is, Connor, in general, will lectures be conducted over Zoom or will there be in-person teaching also? Um, so before 2020 used to be, so, <laughs> so the, the MSc bioinformatics system biology was uh, taught lectures in face-to-face, um, -face. but face-to-face -face meaning has changed now, as you know. So I don't think what's, um, I think majority would be on Zoom. This is my guess. So we still, this is ongoing situation. Uh, a PG cert was all, all, always online. MSc, two, um, three MSCs, by, I mean four actually, all the rest is physical face-to-face -face lectures and practical sessions and but that face-to-face -face, i'm not sure what's going to happen with the postgraduate teaching it's still not clear yet they might be on zoom very in the first semester good shall we move to the next question i'm, I'm apologizing in advance because i don't know how to pronounce the name but it is a kism um asking why is the certification for them facilitated self-paced courses such as the research methods? What are the units and for how many semesters are they going to run? The research methods code is attention because they're needed in the data analysis as a chemist. And also, is it possible to do MC bioinformatics alongside the PhD? This is a third year PhD student with research interest in biocatalysis. So Mudassa, do you want to give it a go to answer this question? Yeah, or? Yeah, I can try. So the second mm -hmm. question first. So doing MSc, actual registering an MSc uh, in parallel to your PhD third year, right? Uh, Jason, are you there? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I, I think you better ask this to the MSc program director. I'm not sure it might be possible. I'm, I, I, I can't answer that. Um, so, definitely research methods, yeah. research methods you can take. You can take all the two, two of the research methods most, and they material will be 
there from I think this next month onwards. So they are quite quite flexible. So they are short courses anyway. It's the five credit courses, all three of them. So machine learning, programming, and statistics. And you can do at your own pace. The material will be available and it will be there. For near some but are you, are you looking are you are you looking tentatively at what time period can the course end? Um, if you're talking about research methods, yeah, right. So research methods is there for you to I mean, use them to learn, right? Mm. So this material will be there. You can finish it yourself. In um, I don't think there is any uh, Alessandro. There is there is no such thing as that you have to finish it within research methods specifically. But other courses are run by as part of the programs, right? Master programs or PG cert. So they have a time uh, limit at this. This is running first semester or second semester. These research methods is the first time we are um, offering them, first time being creative. But I think the materials will be there so you can take them on, at your own, own pace. Okay. I don't I think see you can them start them, uh, yeah. yeah. You can start them as soon as they become available and finish them in your own time. However, mm -hmm. we will require that you finish them before the end of the academic year so that we can get your report back. So by yeah. the end of semester two. And to answer your question, it's not, it's not, I don't know if I got it right, but you're thinking about uh, when you mentioned the MSc in bioinformatics, in this case, you're not doing the whole MSc. You're just, doing a, you're just doing a couple of units within that course. So the answer is yes, you can do that alongside your PhD as soon as your PhD supervisor is okay for you to take time off to study, which for 15 credits is not, uh, is not that much. Okay. But okay does so that answer your question? Uh, yeah, it answers it one part. Then the second part is after you've done maybe 15 credit units, are you going yeah. to be given any certification that you have done this? Yes, we will give you a certificate from Translation Manchester uh, certifying that you have attended those courses. Okay, okay. It's just attendance certificate. His own okay. Yeah, attendance yeah. certificate. I understand. It's not going to be from the great. university. I understand. Yeah. Okay. It makes sense, yeah? Yeah, it makes sense, yeah. That's fine. Thank you. Okay, is there any other question? If people uh, have any other question, they can pop it into the chat or just uh, make themselves visible. We can try to answer them. Yeah, I think we can just talk if, if somebody likes to. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, people to be brave enough to come forward. <laughs> just to say that we will, this is all being recorded and it will be put on the website. We'll also have some frequently asked questions around the general admin and application side of things to share with you as well. So that'll all get uploaded onto the web page. If you haven't been there already, most of the things you need are there. If there's anything that you're still unsure of after we upload this and any extra materials uh, tomorrow, please do just drop us an email and we will endeavor to answer your questions. Maybe we can uh, um, discuss some of the, if there's no other questions from the audience, we can discuss some of the um, question on the slide and the frequent FAQs. Yep, I can open this up. I think people should note that the deadline for applying is quite soon. Yes, Sorry about that. That, <laughs> that will be Wednesday next week at 10 a.m. Yeah. And uh, I think Becky mentioned this before, but we do require a statement from the supervisor if uh, you're a PhD student or postdoc. However, given that the timeline is quite short, we don't want you to stop applying if you cannot get hold of them because they're on holiday. So do apply anyway or get in touch with us anyway. Um, you can get that statement later on. So just a, just a few FAQ type questions uh, that we can have a quick run through here. Uh, so teaching on the units, if you go into the booklet, it'll give you an idea of uh, which semester it will be in. But just to note that the PG cert units, they will start much, uh, well, the, the second unit, health informatics, will start quite quickly. Uh, so those applications that come in for that particular unit will be prioritised after deadline day. So we can get you enrolled as quickly as possible and get you on the teaching, which actually starts on the 7th. So, so that's just a note for the, the PG set unit two, which is health informatics uh, and the MPH units as well. There will be an induction uh, for that course 
on the 15th and 16th of September. So again, we'll prioritise applications that come through onto those courses that are starting uh, the quickest. Um, can you apply if you've been furloughed? Yes, you can apply if you've been furloughed. Uh, that's absolutely fine. Um, how's the decision made on who to offer places to? This really just comes down to how much information you can give us within the application form. There is There are weird restriction limits there, but what we really want to see is how you want to apply your new skills and new training to your existing research. So it might be that you already have a data set that you don't, you don't have the, the right skill set to mine. Um, it might be that you're intending to run a particular experiment or you want more understanding of an, an experimental design. Uh, so just give us some idea of how you intend to use your new skills in your current research. That's the kind of thing we're looking for uh, in, in you being able to use the skills that you get from the courses. Uh, outcomes of applications. So as I said, the, the PG set, the MPH, will be prioritising those first because we need to get you enrolled on those because they have earlier start dates. Teaching for semester one won't start until the 5th of October, so we've got a bit more time, but within two weeks, you should have expected to have heard back with from us whether you've been successful or, unfortunately, if you've not been successful. But we intend to run the scheme again next year, so if you're unsuccessful this year, don't let it put you off coming in again. And as was mentioned earlier, there's no restrictions around being able to apply across multiple years. Some of the units, some of the courses, they do have assessments within the units. Uh, and this is really decided on a, a sort of unit unit basis, depending on which your, what your selections are. But the, the assessments generally are not compulsory in, unless they're really integrated into the teaching of that particular unit, such as group work. And so this year with this new online blended learning group discussion forums, I'm sort of bleeding into the next question now, those are going to be uh, instrumental uh, ways of, of getting um, participants to engage with the content. So we really strongly encourage you to get involved with any group discussion forums that are taking place within your unit. Those are the greatest tools for, for advancing learning. But in terms of assessments, they're not compulsory. If you wish to take part in them, you should consult the course unit organiser um, and that will be down to their discretion as to whether or not they're able to mark your assessment. When it comes to getting access online, once you're enrolled through Blackboard, all the uh, course materials will come through to you. Um, you don't need to submit an application to take part in the MOOCs, but do let us know if you are going to, to register. We're trying to capture that information around the advertising that we've done for the MOOCs. And we want to know again how you how you went on to use the, the skills or the knowledge that you got from those courses afterwards. And time committing to the training. So you can find more information, again, if you click on those hyperlinks within the booklet. Um, but 15 credit units uh, obviously require a lot more time than the five credit self-led units. So do bear this in mind again. Um, make sure you've got the time to commit to the units at, at whenever the, you know, whether that be in semester one or semester two. So that, that covers some of the, the general FAQs. Um, if there are any more questions? Well, any comments? For that matter. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, I think we're a bit ahead of schedule, but if everybody else is happy with that, we can draw the workshop to a close and, and get all this information put online for you. And again, if there's anything else that we can help you with and that's not clear after we've put this information online for you, just drop us an email. Oh, yeah. great stuff. Okay, good. Thank you everybody for attending and thank you. Thank we you. We look forward to receiving your applications. Yes, thank you very much. Thanks, thanks Madassa. Yeah. Thank you, Madassa. Yeah. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye.